Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Achano. This. Mmm. So good. I mean, latte art could use a bit of work, but... Really hits the spot. Welcome back to my C++ series. Kind of. This is kind of a C++ related video, but it's also a very kind of general video, and it's very, very opinion based. And really, we're just going to be talking about why I personally don't using namespace STD. Now, this is a question that I get asked, I want to say almost daily. Like, people ask me that. I, I literally, as I scroll through my comments for the day, someone on some video always asks, hey, you know you can just using namespace STD and then you don't have to type in STD every time. Yes, I do know that. I do know that. But I'm not doing it on purpose. And this video is going to be talking about why I don't do it and why you probably shouldn't do it or maybe you should do it. It's kind of an opinion. Definitely leave your thoughts in the comments below at the end of this video. But let's get right on into this and actually, first of all, talk about what using namespace STD actually does and in fact, what a using namespace is. Okay, so if we just open up the code that was in the previous episode of the C++ series, you can see that I there are a lot of instances here where I use things from the standard library, whether that be something like std vector, stdc out here, stdc in dot get, std function. There's a bunch of things that I'm using from the standard library. Now notice that every time I use something from the standard library, like this find if function, I need to actually type std colon colon out the front before I actually type that function. However, if I just add onto the top of this file as an example, using namespace std just like that, then I don't actually have to do that. I can just go through all of this and remove all the STDs. In fact, I'm just gonna do a find replace std colon colon with nothing in this document. And there you go. You can see that I can just write my code like that. And if I compile it, it will work. And so immediately when people see this, they're like, oh, but the, yeah, the code looks so much cleaner. I'm gonna use this everywhere. And I mean, you don't have to use this up here. You can actually just declare it locally inside a function. So like in this main function, I can just declare it here, which means it just applies to this scope. And you really can do this in any, in any scope. And then I'll, I would still have to use std like that over here. So you can confine it to different scopes. And I mean, yeah, using namespace can be incredibly useful. If you're dealing with really long namespaces or you've got your own namespaces that you've declared for your own files that are in like your own projects and all the symbols, in that, then yes, that can get very long. And in certain functions, you might find yourself calling symbols or accessing symbols that are in those namespaces very often. And so you might wanna just sneak in a little using namespace there. That's totally fine. But specifically, I don't like using namespace STD. And let's take a look at why. So first of all, looking through this code, again, a lot of people would argue that yes, this does look cleaner. I actually argue against that. Because what you may have noticed at the beginning of this video was when I actually had this original code here, it was incredibly easy for me to point out what I was using from the standard template library and from C++'s library, right? I didn't have to really think twice. Anything that had this std prefix to it was from the standard library. Now though, if I use namespace std, well, it's a little bit difficult for me to tell, isn't it? I mean, you can tell just by the naming convention. Find if is not written like that. I mean, clearly I like to write my functions like this in kind of Pascal case, whereas C++ likes this snake case kind of format. So you can still tell via that. But of course, if this for each was written like that, right, in a snake case, well then suddenly, it's easy to tell because it's in this file in my example, but suddenly, find if, is that is that STD's find if for each? Is that the one that's in STD? Is there one in STD? I don't know. Reading this code suddenly has gotten harder for me. Whereas before, if I just had this for each in snake case, it's pretty obvious to me that for each is not part of the standard library because clearly everything that is has that STD colon colon prefix. And I mean, you might, you probably, probably shouldn't wave this around. And I mean, you, you might not think that this is something that you might run into often. I mean, how often am I going to write something called vector or something called find if? I mean, pff, 
Who writes that? C out? Like what kind of function name is that? Come on, am I really gonna write that? Well, let me show you a real world example. I work on core technology at EA in the Frostbite organization, and we use something called EASTL, which is actually open source on GitHub. Now this is basically a replacement for the standard template library that comes with C++, and it's called the EA standard template library. And you can take a look at this if you want to. And since it is a bit of a replacement, the API and everything is really meant to match what the standard template library looks like. So if we take vector as an example, we have this vector.h file, and if we scroll down, you can see it is in the EASTL namespace. However, the class name is the same. If we keep scrolling down here, you can see that we have class vector. So then if I'm kind of writing code at EA, how do I know if, I'm, if I just have vector written like that, am I using EASTL vector? Am I using STD vector? I don't know. It's not initially very apparent to me, but it would be nice for me to see what I'm actually using, which is why if I had that using namespace, I'd have to probably look for it somewhere throughout my code to actually find it and see, oh, okay, right. I had somewhere at the beginning of this file a using namespace std, so I guess this is from the std namespace, right? On top of that, what if someone puts a little using namespace EASTL somewhere? Well, suddenly we're getting a compiler error because that's an ambiguous symbol. The compiler doesn't know. Are we referring to STD vector? Are we, are, are we referring to EASTL vector? I don't know, man. To make matters even worse, and if we kind of go back to as just the example of having a simple library, let's just say that we have a namespace called apple here, and we have a function called print, which, oh, I don't know, let's just say it takes in a string. So const std string, text, and then we see out this text, right? This seems pretty simple to me. If I scroll down over here and make some space, I'm just going to include string up here so that this code actually compiles and I can show you what I mean. So there we have a perfectly reasonable function. Over here, if I was to call it without using namespace, I would have to call print. Let's actually make this lowercase so that it looks more like the uh, standard library here. So if I have apple print like that, and I don't know why it's gone and made that bad, but anyway, hello, there we go, I'm printing something. That's pretty reasonable. Let's just say that I decide to stick a using namespace here so that I don't have to do something like that. This suddenly becomes print hello like this. Now let's say that we've introduced another library and this is called namespace orange, right? So it's, it's a different library, it's the orange library, and it also has a print function. But this one takes in a const char pointer called text. Now, let's just say that this orange does something a little bit different. Instead of just printing this normally, what this actually does is assigns it into a string and then reverses the string and then prints it. So it's essentially printing our text, but in reverse, it's a bit of a malicious function. Now this print, here's the real question. If we're using namespace apple and we use namespace orange as well, then which one's gonna get called? Well, previously, before we actually started using this orange library and we just had apple, well, I mean, it was pretty obvious which one gets called, it's this one over here. And if we run our program, let me just go down here and if zero the rest of this code, except for the same I get, because I don't want that to run. Let's hit F5. Okay, hello gets printed, pretty simple, our function works. But now we've introduced this orange library. Let's go ahead and comment that out. This seems pretty simple. Which one is it gonna call now? Let's hit F5. Oh, well, would you look at that? It's printed out text backwards. Why has it done that? Well, if we look back to the code, this hello is actually a const char array, right? It's not actually a string. If we don't have this orange thing, then of course, what this can actually do is something called an implicit conversion. If you guys don't know what an implicit conversion is, I've made a video on that, which is linked up there. So definitely check that out. But this performs something called an implicit conversion because we can convert a const char into a string. However, since we've introduced the namespace orange library, this print function suddenly has become a better match because this is a const char and using this print function, we don't require any kind of conversion. It doesn't have to be an implicit conversion. However, there does have to be a conversion to reach this one. So we don't get any kind of errors or, I mean, zero warnings, zero errors, nothing like that. But just by introducing this code, we've actually 
started calling a different function completely. This isn't a compile error. This is a silent runtime error. Suddenly all of our text is backwards. That's a nightmare. Imagine that happening. Whereas if we hadn't used namespace apple or orange at all, and we just didn't using namespaces everywhere, then our original code would have been like that. And there's no way that that would ever change if we just simply introduce another library like we did with Orange. It would just remain the same and everything's great. So anyway, those are my thoughts on why using namespace can be very, very bad. Another really big thing that you actually should avoid 100% of the time is using namespace in a header file. Never, ever do that, okay? Because who knows where that's gonna get included and suddenly you're using namespace somewhere where you didn't originally intend to. We have spent hours at certain points debugging compiler errors because something declared a using namespace in a header file and we and then got included somewhere else. It can get really hard to track if you have any kind of sizable project. So don't ever do it in header files. If you absolutely cannot hold yourself back from using namespace, I mean, I because again, I do do, I, I do use using namespace but I usually do it for my own kind of library stuff, right? I don't do it for STD, ever. I don't do it for EASTL, ever. I actually write EASTL colon colon vector every single time. Never do I not do that, okay? Because again, I want to know what I'm using and also I want to avoid possible errors in the future, right? But the biggest one is really just looking at the code and being able to see, okay, STD string that this string class is coming from the standard C++ library, not from some other library. Really easy to see, really clear. But if you absolutely must use your namespace, use it in as small a scope as possible. If you just need it inside an if statement, use it inside an if statement. If you just need it inside a function, which is pretty common, use it just inside that function. And at the largest scope, maybe a CPP file, but never, ever do you do it in a header file, ever. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what your thoughts are on using namespace. Why do you use it? Why do you not use it? What's the biggest catastrophe that's ever happened as a result of someone using namespace when they shouldn't have? And I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.